when you study electricity, they try to tell you, uh, people always say, well, what is electricity? And they say, electricity is a force that shows itself by heating, magnetic, and chemical effects. That isn't what it is. That's an attempt to describe what they think it might be. You can't describe what it is, because it is not it. It's multiplicity of events. When fluids move through a membrane, they generate electric current. I'm going to tell you what it is. When you peel friction tape in the dark, it glows and generates electricity. Every process of any chemical reaction or any transfer from heat to cold produces electrical phenomena. Now, what is electrical phenomena? There are particles of all kinds, varying sizes. When you run electricity through a wire, if it's not that high voltage, it's run through the wire. High voltage rise on the surface of a wire. When you do run high voltage, meaning electricity oh. under high pressure, little hairs come out of the wires. They, they look like molecular fibers under an electron microscope. And those hairs are what electricity pushes out of the wire while it's going through. But the minute you turn the current off, they jump back into the wire. That's called an electric field around the wire. It's the stuff you shove out of the wire while the other stuff is going through it. It's very fine. I don't want to call them electrons or atoms because they're fine. I use the word particles, okay? Or wave, if you like that better. I use the word particles because I lean toward a uh, solid universe. You know, solid, uh, a copper wire is a hole to electricity. To us, it's something solid. All the labels that we give things are based on our own perception. Electricity is one of our most faithful servants. It gives us light. It starts our cars. Has unlimited in aviation. Circle globe with entertainment. It cooks and refrigerates our food. These represent few of the innumerable applications of electricity. Electricity at work. But what is electricity and where does it come from? In the mainstream, electricity has not been appropriately understood or explained. Like if you ask a mainstream physicist, what is electricity? They'll tell you that it's a charge moving, like an electron moving through a wire or so, uh, or electrons moving in a gas and so on, and produce an electric field. However, if you ask where does the charge on the electron or on the proton, or where did the charge come from, what is the moment of the charge, um, you know, that has not been explained, that has not been um, uh, appropriately described in physics. So, in fact, we don't really know where electricity comes from because basically if you dig a little bit in the standard model, you'd have to say, oh, it uh, came from the Big Bang, you know, the charge on the particles and so on, which is kind of a cop-out, you know. Uh, when science doesn't know where something came from, like mass and basically all of the material in our universe and so on, they just revert back to it came from the Big Bang, which is similar to if you went to church on Sunday and asked where did all the material world come from, you'd, you'd be told it came from God, which actually gives you a pretty similar answer, uh, basically leaves you hanging with this unknown that's supposed to have produced everything. So uh, in this theory... Uh, that I'm writing, uh, charge starts to have a different um, attribute. It starts to be described more appropriately. You can, s it has very specific ways in which it occurs. Uh, in this last paper I published, the Schwarzschild proton, I actually extrapolate charge from a mini black hole proton that's being fed by the vacuum structure. So actually, what I am showing is that charge comes directly from the structure of space. 
uh, that it is a function of the space around the atom or around the material world that Car that curves, that produces charge, that it is space and time, is the energy of the vacuum feeding the atomic structure, feeding the material world that produces charge, and then when charge is, you know, moved or uh, dealt with appropriately, you can get electric uh, fields from it, electricity, and so on. So, you know, this view starts to you know, deepen our understanding of the fundamental forces of nature and the uh, powers that nature makes available to us. Electric power is everywhere, present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other of the common fuels. Nikola Tesla. I, I do believe it's possible, and I think that if somebody came up today with a free energy device, probably the uh, forces that make a tremendous amount of money from selling electrical energy through wires would probably unite against that person, because it would destroy their whole economic base. It just makes sense that that would happen. Do I believe that free energy is possible? I do, but not in the sense that people are thinking in terms of uh, uh, free energy as perpetual motion or energy coming out of something. You know, when you think about it, when a sailboat moves across the ocean, that is free energy, is it not? Well, it doesn't mean that, it's, uh, that they're creating energy as they go. It just means that they put their sails up and catch energy that is already there in the universe, and they convert it into useful motion for a boat. And I believe that these people who are looking for the electromagnetic free energy are on the right track because it's possible that there is an electronic or ele electromagnetic force in the universe similar to the wind. You can't see the wind, but we know it's there because we can feel it on our cheek. It's there. We can't see it. It's invisible. Well, if we couldn't feel it on our cheeks, we might say it's not there, but we have ev evidence that it's there. Well, there's evidence that there's something else out there in the universe that's electromagnetic in nature. It causes all kinds of phenomena that we can't explain. So we think there's something there. So these um, researchers are just looking for something, the equivalent of a sail, to reach up and capture this electromagnetic energy that is everywhere and to put it to work for us. Now, they call that free energy. Would it be free energy? No more than capturing the wind. It's just capturing a source of energy that we, at the present, do not recognize exists. So I, I don't uh, relate to that argument that uh, free energy would be the undoing of human beings. It could be. I don't know. But I think human beings are more the undoing of human beings, uh, even without free energy. Uh, I think that free energy could be a good force or a bad force, depending on whose hands uh, they're in. it's in. And we're back to this old issue again. Is something good or bad? It depends on who's using it, you know? Is money good or bad? It could be either. Is a gun good or bad? Could be good or bad, depending on who's using it. I think free energy, it falls into exactly that same category. If it falls into the hands of the, of the totalitarians of the world, they're certainly going to use it against mankind. Uh, but if it falls into the hands of uh, people who believe in helping their fellow human beings and giving them freedom, then I think it would be a wonderful thing because it would free the common man from a lot of effort and toil that he has to go through, and it would raise his standard of living, and he could improve his education and his knowledge of the universe and of himself, and he, we could eliminate poverty. We could eliminate a lot of things that we don't like right now.